Hello, Hello. I'm Yolafi, <laughs> and this is my Fujifilm X100V. And uh, thank you for having me. In Thanks this for being here. Sunny weather today. Um, coffee and cameras with Yolafi. What's your favorite coffee to drink, Yolafi? Well, I'm just a very basic flat flat white drinker. Flat but white. this morning I had a latte with you. A latte. <laughs> it's just a, a variation of a flat uh, white. <laughs> special day. <laughs> Um, amazing, thanks for coming out on a beautiful Sunday morning, sun's out. We were worried about the rain, but yeah. get lucky. Very lucky, right uh, after we finished the coffee. A beautiful coffee. Sunny. So, you said you wanted to keep this one a, a five minute video so we can go take some photos. Let's do it, the light is just too, <laughs> good, too good for me to ramble on and on. <laughs> let's, let's just do it five oh, minutes. Oh gosh. Um, what do you want to start? Do you want to talk about, let's talk about do you want to talk about the big news before we get into the, your kind of history of photography or do you want to keep that for later? Keeping people engaged with the video for the big news at the end? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah you want to do that instead? So everyone, uh, just stay to the very end to find out <laughs> what the big news is. <laughs> it's a bit of a sad news, but I hope you guys can stick around. Um, so yeah, let's, let's tease them with this and put them aside. But Talk about, um, you've been doing photography for a long time, but you weren't always using a camera camera, if I can say that. You've been using a different tool before. Your iPhone, that's right. So, tell us about that story. You just moved to Sydney in 2017, if I recall correctly. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, um, I moved to Sydney in 2017. With not this, this is my 12th. 12 mini, iPhone 12 mini, uh, but I started to shoot with iPhone 6 <laughs> when I just moved to Sydney. And uh, it was not really about photography, to be honest, at the beginning it was more about Instagram, because I mm -hmm. finally got access to Instagram, started to taking photos of the brand new country, lovely Sydney, and posting random photos on Instagram. Um, thank you for the thanks for the algorithm. That that was the first time I actually got uh, interact with came across to some street photographers on Instagram. Okay. And uh, I think it's because some of my random photos they do have some elements of street photography. Right. Yeah. So so I was amazed uh, to see that actually people using Instagram as their online kind of gallery thing, right. instead of, you know, posting selfies and <laughs> coffee photos. But to be honest, I didn't really click straight away. Um, I actually deleted my Instagram from my phone for probably about two years. And I finally got it back around two years ago, 2021, I think, because I finally upgraded my iPhone 6 <laughs> to a 12 mini, so I started taking photos again, got my Instagram back, posting photos again. And then I noticed, I realized, wow, the street photographers I followed before, they are still posting their street photograph photographies. That's really amazing. So at that point, I finally decided to focus on this and uh, only street photography photos and actually deleted my selfies from my page. <laughs> and your food photos and your coffee photos. <laughs> Tough decision, <laughs> but I made it and uh, here I am. Here so I think it's really grateful to, to have the positive feedback at the very beginning um, as a beginner because I really got the really pro professional street photographers, they like my photo, they just uh, leave some very positive comments and that's really something kept awesome. me going, yeah, really nice. That's positive feedback is always good, keeps yeah. you motivated and keeps you going, getting yes. a little bit of a pat on the back is helpful. Um, what, how would you define your style though? I want to say, uh, in my humble opinion, your style is very unique. Um, what, you. How, would you, how would you describe your style of photography? To be honest, I feel like it's kind of difficult to talking about myself or my style because 
somehow I don't really know. Um, can I can I help you out if that's okay? Give you my well, I, yeah, almost, that, no, no, I mean, please, please. if you're having a hard time <laughs> <laughs> describing your own self photography, I'm happy to happy to jump in and um, say it's dystopian. It's um, I think it's a bit uh, maybe unrealistic. Unrealistic, yep. Bit, I like surreal scenes. Mm -hmm. and, That's a better uh, way. Yeah, you're right. I like solitude. I like people walking, sitting by themselves. Um, a, a lot of your images is just one uh, single just person. Just one person. I don't recall ever seeing. Anything that's you know a, a busy scene or a uh, complex scene. layering of multiple people, yeah. Not so good at that, yeah. very much an extension of your personality, right? Uh, an introvert. Yeah, you know what? Um, you know they say I think it's almost a cliche, but I still don't know who said that exactly. So the photos you take are not just your photos; they are the roads you have traveled. Oh, wow. The list, the music you have listened. Very deep. Okay. And the books you have read. Okay. And uh, I'd agree. The people you have loved. Ah. I do beautiful. think that is the case for all of us. Um, so for me, to, if to be more specific, I honestly don't know. Is it, is it, the childhood trauma, <laughs> <laughs> or is it being living here? For almost seven years now, all by myself, without family, or is it my favorite uh, Albert Camus books I read and loved? I honestly don't know, but I do notice one thing about my style. Yeah. I think my earlier photos, my previous photos, look more colorful and bright. <laughs> but now they are, for some reason, they're getting more and more less and less colors less and, less and color, yeah. darker more and monochrome. darker yes. and more and more black and white. Are you saying white. that your personality, is, your life is becoming more dark? Than you know, when I noticed that, I look at my own photos, I was like, I was literally thinking, am I okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly don't know. So I think it's definitely something, it's definitely me in my photos. But, and it's slightly changing for some reason, but to be honest, I don't know, it's out of control, <laughs> let me be honest. It's, it's probably because, I mean, as humans we grow, we change yeah. over time. I, sorry, just waiting for all the sports cars to drive by us so I can speak. Your favorite uh, <laughs> thing to... I know, Porsche, right, they're beautiful. Um, as humans we grow, we change, our personalities change, what, mm. our moods change depending on what's happening in the world, what's going through our minds. So. I don't necessarily think, in my, my, again, just humble opinion, I don't think it's necessarily anything major. I think it's just how you're feeling, what you're going through in your life at the moment, which we'll get to in a little bit at the, at the end of the video. Um, maybe that's what's affecting, because you're projecting your feelings and your thoughts through your camera and what you're capturing in the world, right? Um, I love that. I love that I think that as an artist, you're growing and changing and uh, your styles maybe changing a little bit. Maybe not you start, the tonality of your photos are changing a little bit. Um, thank you for sharing that, by the way. That's, I think it's quite deep and meaningful, in my opinion. Thank you for to, um, to reflect on your art and think about how it's evolving over time and mm -hmm. how that's affected by why you go, what you're going through in your life at the moment. So that's beautiful. Um, what else? We going that way? Sure. That little alleyway. Going across? Oh, that alleyway, yes. Just <laughs> the alleyway. Um, what next? So we've talked about your style. We've talked about um, how that's affected by what you're going through your life and decisions. Yes, and uh, jumped from iPhone to actual camera. Actual camera. Um, would you... How do you feel about iPhone photography? Do you, would you still consider using your iPhone as your main camera? Not anymore. Not anymore? Before I got the camera, it took me a long time to finally decide to, to buy a camera because before I was like, oh, you know, I think the iPhone photos, they don't look bad at all. But once I got it, and it just, just I can never go back. I feel like it's just like what? when you listen to music. Yeah. 
and uh, before you listen to music from your phone directly, and then you got a speaker, you can never go back yeah, to listen gotcha. music from your phone again. The quality of the sound, quality, quality of the photo, yeah. Completely different, and that's the same thing with phone and camera, and especially when you print them out. You probably don't really see the huge difference on your phone, but when you print them out, totally, totally different. I know that because I did print two photos uh, just not long time ago, one from my phone mm -hmm. and the one uh, I took with my camera. <laughs> Look at this. Let's try. <laughs> see no, what we can find now. <laughs> uh, maybe this way. Either way, sure. Okay, so. Printed two photos, yes. one was from your phone and one and, was from your camera. Yes, and I actually have to thank to you because I got the prints from Poster Factory. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, which well, is you the one that. you recommended. I asked you where you got your prints because I, I was really, really impressed by your print. And thank to you. be honest, I have seen prints, uh, but framed on the wall. Right. In the, you know, exhibitions or something, but I follow you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not a very good leader. Um, but the first time when I saw your prints, it was the first time I was literally holding a piece of fine art. Oh wow! Thank in you. In my hands. It's very kind. I could literally feel the weight. Um, the texture and I can see all the details like this close. I remember that was, I was, when I opened the box of your print, I was just sitting by the window in my room and it was warm and bright winter afternoon light, you know, sun, sun, sunlight all over the print. I sat there for a good 20 minutes in silence. Oh, wow. It was really, enlightenment moment I have to say because I just realized I haven't been really taking what I was doing seriously enough and um, there's one little story I have never shared with anyone except for here actually um, so last year pretty much one year ago I actually got approached by a founder of an online gallery and uh, it was a lady based in German. So she DM'd me and said, well, we love your work and uh, this is what we're going to do. That's our website and we would like to, you know, maybe try to sell your prints. Um, and, and there was no end. Nothing really happened after that <laughs> because I thought it was a scam, to be honest. Okay. Not because I thought they are a scam, but I thought I'm a scam. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why would you think that? Because I got my camera only September last year, and uh, I got the they they, they tested me uh, in November. Oh, okay. So okay. I was like, well, the, the all the photos you have seen basically are my phone photos, and uh, how am I supposed to <laughs> print them out and sell them? You know that kind of stuff. So they were saying, oh, we're looking for emerging artists to collaborate with, and I was thinking, okay, then. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> you were an emerging artist. But and obviously, sorry to interrupt, but you were good enough um, just using your iPhone to be able to get noticed by someone. Oh, thank you. But... That way? But when I got my own prints just a few months ago from Poster Factory, and uh, that was really the first time that I think I was having a piece of art here which made by myself and that, that feeling was really it's awesome. It's a nice moment isn't it when you hold your own work in your own hands as opposed to just seeing it on the screen. Yes and that was really empowering to be honest. So so if anyone looking for an <laughs> emerging artist, then hello. You're right available. Yeah. <laughs> so really, thank you. Oh, thank it's you. my pleasure. I'm glad I had that effect on you. And I, I got to be honest, the first time I got my photos printed as well, it's, it's a whole different feeling. Yeah. Um, again, to hold something that you've, you've made with a digital camera, mm. someone's printed it for you. Yeah. 
Um, and it's cotton based. I think the I think the photo the the paper um, I chose, which you ended up choosing, it's a cotton based rag. It's got a lot of weight to it. Very heavy. Um, textured. Textured. Um, it just feels really nice yes. in the hand, and it's beautiful, especially for black and white photos. So I'm glad you had that experience, Sophie. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. What do we got here? So tell me what would interest you about this scene. Let me just try to pan around, show everyone. Um, what do you find interesting here? Um, no people. <laughs> no people. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, you know, the car looks interesting in this background. I like clean background. I like clean simple backgrounds. and clean background. Okay. Mm. It is very symmetrical. It's very yeah, yeah. minimal. Minimal, yeah. Exactly. You're right. Very ultra modern almost. Mm. A little bit. Um, dystopian in a way, like mm. a office prison <laughs> in a sense. Small windows, but they're everywhere. Which we're gonna go back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, back to work tomorrow. <laughs> one more week, I can get Yay. through, one more week of work. Yes. So printing your work is important. That's one of your recommendations for any photographer if they haven't and um, do a, you know, if you're gonna spend the money and print something, it's not that much more. It's a few dollars more to get a really high quality, um, what someone might qualify as gallery quality um, prints. So definitely one of your recommendations. Um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend to skip one meal or two. To, yeah, to, to <laughs> one do meal that or is two. Totally <laughs> it's not that expensive. <laughs> um, so printing and then, what else do we want to talk about? It's quite a bit. We okay. Let me let's get to this this heavy subject, if that's okay. So we've talked about, I guess your your style, your version of street photography. Mm. Um, you mentioned the story earlier to me before we started filming, which is, I guess, for me, strange, odd, um, inappropriate. Um, what do you consider not to be street photography? Yeah. So, I know that every, we all have different definitions for street photography, which is amazing. That is, I love the diversity. Um, but there's one thing I'm pretty sure is not street photography. Because I actually saw two photos. One, I saw two photos that people, for some reason, they try to find the decisive moment on the someone's skirt and one of them was very close to us location wise okay and another one I only saw it a few months ago so I'm not talking about something far away or long ago um, and also I was quite shocked to see lots of likes um, and uh, encouraging comments, comments right below the two photos but the good thing was there are some different voice. I saw one, I saw two interesting, oh be careful. I saw two interesting comments. Uh, one from a guy said, now this is not good, this is not okay, because we street photographers, we already not having very good reputation out there. Right. So this kind of photo only makes us looking even worse yeah and another guy said well imagine what if that's your wife or your daughter how right. would you feel exactly and uh, i think that's great i really appreciate that they actually speak up and against this kind of behavior um but that that detour of the logic really remind me David Chappelle, um, who is a very great comedian, he used to tell a story in one of, one of his stand-up shows, said when he was 17, he was living in New York, very poor, so he worked for, collect money for drug dealers. So one night, he got a full backpack of cash, 25,000 US dollars which was a lot, huge amount back in the 80s. And middle of the night, 
So he has to carry that bag, jump on taxi to, to deliver to another location. He was so scary, so scared, so scared. Never been that scared in his entire life. I bet. Because he was thinking, well, if people know that I have this with me, they're definitely going to kill me. Because that is some, something everyone wants, right? And then he start to think, well, what if I have a pussy on me every day? Then he said that was the first time ever he realized what women are dealing with every day. So I really do appreciate some, some of the guys they actually speak up against that kind of photo, that kind Absolutely. of behavior. Yeah. Um, this just remind me what David Chappelle. It's a it's a has. really good analogy. You're, I mean, yeah, spot on. I just, I mean, I've, I've thought about this quite a bit since we, you mentioned it to me before. First of all, I don't think you need to be someone who's got a, a wife or a daughter to be able to understand that taking a photo of. Uh, a, a lady's underpants, especially from an um, upwards angle, is just inappropriate. I don't care what you want to call it, it's just not okay. Um, and for those of you out there who are maybe new to photography, who don't understand the term decisive moment, uh, it's a term that is used uh, from Henry Cartier Brisson, I think he's the one who came up with it, is when you're looking at a scene and you feel like the moment is the moment that needs to be captured. That's the moment that's going to tell a story. That's the moment that's going to make your photo. Um, that could be a scene where, you know, someone's making eye contact with the camera or, um, you know, a kid's licking an ice cream and the ice cream just falls off their hand. Something like that, just as an example. But to think that taking a photo of a, a woman's under where uh, while she's walking from a from an angle like that is a decisive moment. It's just pure silliness. So it's upskirting is not. Yeah, upskirt. Uh, um, anyway, that I think. Thank you for sharing that. You want to go that way, by the way, or you want to which way do you want to go? Deciding still this way. Okay. Otherwise, we're gonna end up go to, to the, the rocks. The bridge. I don't know. Um, but on the other hand, I don't know. Like, I think most of them they would never have. As street photographer, they probably will never have the chance to have that amount of money with them, cash with them, walking around. So I don't know who needs to listen to this. <laughs> uh, all right. I think, thank you again. Thank you for sharing this. It's, it's important for people to hear that um, things like that are happening. Hopefully not a lot. You said there was two examples and you said there were at least a few people rarely, who rarely. were outspoken against it, which is good to hear. Mm. Um, it's a lovely community. Yes. After all, yeah, really. Okay, how do we change subjects now? We went. You know what? <laughs> I there's something interesting. I listened to the latest episode of Street Life yesterday. Okay. I'm not sure if you have listened to that yet. Um, that's my every episode a, a podcast. Um, so the latest one, Mark Davis and uh, John Street, they got Matt Hope. Uh, I think his Instagram handle is the 13th second. Okay. Great, great British street photographer. It was fascinating because he mentioned he was in Australia a few oh, yeah. months ago and he was struggled with the harsh light. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, the Brits, you know, they're not used to sunlight. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> what he got used to is the, the mist, kind of misty, you know, that kind of weather. So he was struggled. And I was like, how interesting because I struggled. I was a few months ago when I went back to China without a harsh light. <laughs> so, so I think it's literally just, uh, it's not about what kind of weather you have, what kind of light you have. It's just about our comfort zone, like what we got used Good to. Good points, right? yeah. yeah. So I, I, I was actually really frustrated. Um, why I got back to China because I had really, really high expectations. I was thinking, oh, I got my camera now and uh, I have my 
enough emotion, probably more than enough. I was overwhelmed <laughs> after four and a half years not being home, away. Right? Yes. Um, so I was thinking, I'm definitely gonna make great photos. <laughs> but the light was just uh, so flat. You know, when you have the flat light, everything looks less dull, right? Everything just kind of less blends contrast in. Yeah. And the less dramatic it was really challenging for me. So it was really fascinating to, to listen to the episode yesterday, and the, which I think really encouraged me to, to maybe step out from the confidence zone more in the future, yeah. It's, um, I think I experience that a little bit every time I go traveling when you get somewhere new, because I think it takes at least a day to adjust. You got new architecture, mm. new people, different light situation. Mm. Um, and like you said, you're accustomed to a specific space. For us it's Sydney and the light, the way it comes here, it's very unique just because yeah. of the, the buildings, the way the streets are set up, um, the angles and all that, and the sun that we have here. It's pretty consistent and it changes throughout the day. The way we get light coming through is quite different. If you go yeah. to the same spot at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., it, it might look incredible and by 12 p.m. it might be just too much light and then by 4 p.m. Mm. you might get some interesting reflections coming through. So you can be in the same spot at different times of the day and actually be able to create or capture something really interesting and unique and different. Yeah. Where when you're traveling and you get somewhere new, you don't know it really well. Um, like you said, in, in, in your example in China, it's flat lights. And, mm. But you also had a lot of emotion to deal with as well. You haven't been there in mm. four, four and a half years. Mm. Uh, you were excited um, and you probably felt quite frustrated because mm. you weren't able to instinctively make photos that you're accustomed to making in Sydney. Yeah, but overall it was a surprising um, trip because yeah, even during the trip I didn't feel like I was getting anything. In the middle of the trip I was like, oh, another day, you know, <laughs> nothing. But after I got back to Sydney, I went through the photos I got, and I think they you don't. That's some amazing look, stuff. Thank you. They don't look as bad as, as I, bad as I so thought. Humble. And I even ended up pick one of the photos to talk about for a good 60 seconds on our mutual friend Dan, the cameraman's YouTube channel. Man, he's getting another plug on my channel again. Good lord, Dan, get your own YouTube channel and promote it your way. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love Dan. He's got a great channel as well. Um, again, Sydney local photographers, but I can't wait to see that episode. 60 second little video of your favorite photo from China. Um, hopefully you'll send me a few of your favorites. The five, oh, okay. that little set you've got on Instagram, I love that one. If you can send that for the people at home watching. Thank so you. we can share it there, it'd be great. I have something extra to send you. Extra to send? Except oh. for that, I have something Exclusive Exclu content for your <laughs> yes. channel only. Did you hear that, Dan? Exclusive content for my channel. Take that. Because um, I was not planning on any f exhibition, but I happened to visit some awesome photography exhibitions back in China, including um, Joseph Kodaka, including. Um, Harry Katia Bresson. Okay. And One including, of my yeah, including Bruno Barbe. Okay. So I think one of his, one of Bruno Barbe's very known, well known photo from China was he shoot the one back in 80s or 70s that all, a bunch of Chinese people in gray and bluish clothes because that's the only style we had back then. And uh, everyone was on bicycle, riding bicycle in front of oh. a statue of Chairman Mao, waving his hand over there. Um, I went to the exact same spot. I took a oh, photo. I can't wait to see this. Like 30 years apart. So it's really interesting to compare them from, you know, bicycle was the only transportation for working class back then to right now. It's the new age of shared bicycles everywhere in China. So. Speaking of shared bicycles, sorry, let me just pan to one just sitting right there. Mm. Did we plan this? Was this planted by you? Oh, you, yeah. Yes. Good timing, right? <laughs> I know. 
And there was a video, actual short video I'm going to send you later. Also I can't exclusive. wait. This is exciting. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, okay. Awesome. Awesome. It's uh, quite interesting to think about time capture through photography and especially going to the same exact spot, uh, capturing the culture, the essence of that part of the history and then going back to it today and then seeing how things have progressed. Mm. Um, and then hopefully in 40 years, we'll go back and see what's changed then. It'd be very interesting to see. Yes. Um, I think that's the beauty of photography as well from a documenting a specific time of our history and then reflecting on it and I find it quite fascinating. It's in fact somewhat recently, I don't remember what made me think this way. So I, when I import my photos, um, practically delete 80 to 90% of them. They're just, yep, gone. <laughs> um, and I may have one or two that I really like and I'll share that on social media. And then everything that's kind of okay that I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's something, but it's nothing special. I'll keep another loud car. Anyway, um, but I've now put on an extra lens on this going, maybe it's not a photo worth sharing today. Maybe it's nothing special right now. Maybe it will be in 30 or 40 years. So now I've, I've kind of look at some of my images that way and going, is this going to be something that um, is going to be interesting to someone in, I don't know, hopefully yeah. 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember what caused me to think that way because before that it was just about what's beautiful now, what can I find interesting now as opposed to what could be interesting in 30 years. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think we yeah. can just keep going. And it's burning a room after that, so, or we can just walk down this way. Yeah. Because there's no, no one here. Nice. So, it was so one you know, I've been doing um, an online workshop. Yes. Has you been have. a while, yeah. Um, with Sam Ferris. Sam Ferris. Ah, lucky me. So, so, you know, Sam is, I just always love Sam's work. Great street photographer from Sydney. And I've been doing his online workshop for the last few months because it was designed uh, as a 12 weeks. Oh, look at this. Sorry. It's okay. Do you want to sit? Do you want to go sit? <laughs> <laughs> Be my Do you want to sit in that chair? I don't know if that chair is Let's just clean pretend. enough for anyone to sit in Let's it. Let's pretend it's not staged. Maybe it is someone's actual chair who just hangs Someone out. Someone's spot. Someone's you know. spot. This is a good spot, actually. Not too bad, huh? Hmm. So, yeah, has been really, really amazing workshop. It was actually my first ever, like, constructed um, photography workshop. Uh, I what really made you decide to take his workshop? Why not? Like that's, I don't. I think that's the, his first time doing this. I think he only did the, designed the whole thing um, recently. Finished design the whole class recently, and that's the first ever class. Amazing. He had. Yeah. So I was really, really lucky to got in. And uh, you know, because we know that doing something great and uh, good at teaching that, like share the knowledge with others, they are completely two different skills, right? Mm -hmm. But Sam, for people who don't know that he is actually a teacher, um, that's his, I think, full-time day, day job. Uh, so he has really solid academic background. So, which means he really has the, all the theories for teaching, but not only theories, but also he has been practicing them all these years yeah. in his daily, daily job. So I really love the, so every week we have a specific topic and the slides, he goes through the sli slides with us and amazing reading materials every week. And we also got some one-on-one one -on -one time, like we can submit our images, our photos to him for critic, 
that's really amazing because he really pointed out lots of things, details in my own photo, which I didn't even notice. <laughs> that is the thing, you know, it's really fascinating. And um, I love the reflection questions he got us to think. So it's like the questions that never had, I never had anyone ask me before, I never thought about that before. It's like really... Can you share one of them? In, in words to our own cre creative soul. Uh, yeah, sure. So there was a question at the very beginning of the workshop that, as we mentioned earlier, like what's the, everyone has a different definition of street photography. Right. Right. So what our personal uh, definition, what does it mean for us? Sorry. It's okay. Not to break you out of your thoughts, what what did you find interesting about this spot? Because I'd walk lights. I'd walk by this and I'm like meh. I like the lights. The lights, nice. okay. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry, Sam Ferris, reflection so, question. For me. Say photography. You know what? Uh, when I went back to China for the for the six weeks trip, I keep listening to one Chinese song. And the, the name of the song is really beautiful. If I trans it's a Chinese song, but if I translate it directly to English, the, the song called My Solitude Recognized Your Solitude. Sorry, I missed the last part. Your solitude, yeah. the bus. My, my solitude recognized your solitude. That's ah, the song of the name. Okay. Oh, that's the name of the song. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very rude. <laughs> Do you want to go? Yeah, Maybe we can cross. Yeah. Cross. Um, so I, when I answer the, the reflection question, I that's my answer. That's my answer. Like, recognition is the definition of uh, my own definition of street photographer. Because I just feel like. As we mentioned earlier, I always, most of the times I only have one person in my photos because I think that's what I've been doing all this time, like my solitude, mm -hmm. recognized your solitude. And that's the moment that I feel really connect, deeply connect with the person. The person in across. My photo, yeah. And uh, also, you know, Sam's workshop is really about, as he actually mentioned in the workshop, uh, that's the way I, I found it, um, is just to show you all the possibilities of street photography and uh, but eventually allowed us to produce the work like how we want to produce and to find our own voice and style. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that. Um, obviously, Sam's quite talented as a photographer, but also as you said, because he's a teacher, Great he knows teacher. how to articulate, how to share, how to help you learn what he knows. But I also think what I love about what you just said now is that usually when you get a workshop from a photographer, they're teaching you what they do in street mm. photography. Mm. They don't teach you about photography or mm. street photography, they teach you that's the, spot. Man style. Right. That's, that's the spot. That's the spot. Come to my spot and take the shot. That's normally the. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. I thought was the. That's it. You're right. No. No. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of them. Then that's one of the main reasons I've I've taken one workshop and it's around bookmaking and projects, mm. not around street photography because my biggest fear is spending a lot of money going to a workshop and then having a well-known photographer teaching me their style of photography, which I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really, and, with respect, care for. Should because, like them eventually. Yeah, I want to I wanna have my own voice, I want to yeah, have my yeah, own yeah. style, I don't want to have to copy somebody else's uh, yeah. um, to be a photographer, right? So that's, that's really kudos to Sam. I think that's a very beautiful way of sharing knowledge yeah. without just going, come and do what I do, and mm -hmm. then you're a photographer. No, let me, let me teach you what photography is about you can go and make your own voice heard because you said the reflection question that he had um, asked you as your students to think about was what does street photography mean to you, right? And that's not a question that you can just answer in a moment, something you have to sit down, reflect, think about, mm. maybe even look at the photos you've made so far, um, try to understand what appeals to you, find a common theme. So it's, uh, again, incredible work, Sam. I'm, yeah. 
maybe job. now Thank having a bit of FOMO for missing out on, uh, on his workshop. So glad you got to actually go through it. That's pretty much everything. Is it time for the, the big news then? The, the drop your mic and walk away <laughs> moment, you're laughing? Do it now. Okay, so yeah, thank you, really thank you for having me uh, on this and uh, I just really want to thank everyone in this community because you know we really have so great street photography community here in Sydney. I'm not sure if I can find something like this anywhere else. Oh, I'm sure you will. Uh, so really, I'm really grateful to be part of this. And, but unfortunately, I'm leaving, I don't know, maybe when people see this, I'm already <laughs> in Thailand. So I'm leaving 30th of December, heading off to Thailand. And actually next year will be gap year, I guess. Or maybe I'm just gonna work remotely for a while. But because I, because the whole China trip actually wasn't not as bad as I thought. So I kind of think I can probably do better, do, do more in China and actually I do I did have a big list of the cities I I want to go shoot like Tibet somewhere I always been wanted to go but I didn't get enough time to, to visit uh, in the last trip. So next year 2024 will be my gap year and uh, I would like to see how long I can go. I'm, <laughs> I want to travel as much as I can as far as I can to get more photos. Incredible. First of all um sad to see you go but also very excited for you i think it's going to be an amazing year um exploring yeah. uh, it's it's courageous it's not I you know a lot of people think well maybe they think it's an easy decision to make but i'm sure it was a a tough one to think about and decide that it's time to kind of put everything in one suitcase sell what you can't take with you and then just go somewhere brand new you've never been before mm -hmm. um do a bit of exploring, soul searching, whatever else you may want to do. Uh, but you don't really have, from my understanding, any solid plans. Like it's not like you've got a, a return date or you've got a ticket booked to come back to Sydney or go back home in China. You've just kind of gone, I'm taking this year for me um, for personal reasons, for maybe growth reasons. Um, challenging yourself a little bit differently. Yes. Uh, I think it's incredibly courageous and brave and also exciting. It's scary, but exciting at the same time. So yes. sad to see you go, but very happy for you. Yeah, get um, out from the comfort zone and just shoot regardless. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. It's a bit of a sad note, but um, can't think of anything else that we spoke about that we I haven't. it's been really great. I've covered everything. And, um, Thank you very much for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Yolafi. Thank it's been my pleasure. Um, yes, okay, a sad okay. note. <laughs> uh, well, see you uh, later. See you later. Someday. Yeah. Thanks, Yolafi. Thank Bye. You. Bye.